morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to you to St. Bart's. First of all, welcome to those who are joining us online, whether on Facebook or on Zoom. Good to have you with us again. And welcome especially to those who are gathered here. If I'm counting correctly, there are 13 of us in the sanctuary, and it's good to see you. And it's very strange for me to see people in church. It's something I remember in the dim distant past, or at least it feels a bit like that. So it's good to have you with us, and it's good to see you all scattered around. Um, at some point, um, we will probably show a picture of the congregation, but what you should see on the screen there is whatever people see on Zoom or Facebook. We had a couple of problems with it last week, but when you have a reader from home, such as Kathy and Kevin Dyer today, they should appear on the screen and we should all hear them through the loudspeakers. If it doesn't happen that way, that's what's meant to happen. So welcome. If anyone is wanting to connect to the internet with their phone, the password is back to what it always used to be, Blessing 08. So we're going to begin with our first hymn. And as you came in, you should have been able to pick up um, a hymn sheet and an order of service. So our first hymn then, when you're ready, wait. So if you're following in the Book of Common Prayer, we turn to page 355, or the top of the bulletin, if you're following on that. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receiving our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceed. Grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance may be them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one of God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased to Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now listen, or excuse me, now then listen to their voice only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots and he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards, orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we may also 
so we also may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, come let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. They then, excuse me, there they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. And they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Was in the is now, will be the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is written in 2 Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, 
Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again, so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. The people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him and said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord God Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will take my words and speak through them, take our hearts and speak to them, that each of us may hear your word today. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. Words from this morning's psalm. Giving thanks is the theme of that whole psalm. And today, we are back together in our sanctuary in person. It's a good reason to give thanks, and it's a good reason to preach on that text. Today, we are giving thanks because we will receive communion. For the first time for most of us since March last year. We will only receive it in one kind, but it's still communion. It's a good reason to give thanks and a good reason to preach from that text. Today we give thanks for the service of the Eucharist. And that word Eucharist is just one name for Holy Communion. We could call it the Mass, we could call it Holy Communion, the Liturgy, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Eucharist. It's another name, and each of them stresses a different aspect of the service. Eucharisto is the Greek word to give thanks. I thank you, Eucharisto. If you go to Greece today, you give the waiter in the, in the restaurant a tip, that waiter will say, Encaristo. It's the same word. One letter has changed over the centuries since the time of Christ. But it's the same word to give thanks. It's the ordinary, everyday word for thank you. You might want to notice as the service goes on how often that word thank you appears. Giving thanks is something that comes up frequently in the scriptures, in the Old Testament and in the New, especially in today's psalm. But think of a few examples. You could pick up almost any one of Paul's letters, and you'll find near the beginning he says something like, 
I always give thanks for you in my prayers, thinking of, and he says something about that specific group of people. And then there's a story of Jesus healing 10 lepers. He sends them to go to the priest and show themselves and then get the declaration that they're clear of leprosy. The 10 go off and one comes back to say, thank you. And Jesus seems shocked that only one came back to say, thank you. What happened to all the other nine who were Israelites and this one who said thank you wasn't? Why is giving thanks so important? I want to give you three reasons. First of all, it creates positive feelings. We feel better after saying thank you. We feel better after thanking God. It creates positive reasons. Secondly, if we're thanking God, it lifts the focus of our thinking away from the mundane details of life up to God. It gives us a broader perspective. It puts something in a different context. Somehow it lifts us out of the depression that we sometimes get ourselves into. And I'm not talking about clinical depression as an illness here. I'm not being light about that, but just the ordinary kind of depressed feelings we all get. It lifts our focus to God. And thirdly, it completes the action for which we're giving thanks. Without the thank you, the giving of the gift is somehow incomplete. Some months ago, a young relative of mine in the UK was 18. I sent him a check for his 18th birthday. Fairly generous check as it happened, and I didn't hear a thing. I gave it because he's related to me and I love him and his family. I didn't give it because I wanted a thank you. But somehow, not getting that thank you leaves me feeling a little unappreciated. It's not his fault. He probably hasn't been brought up to write thank you letters. I don't think I was either, actually. But there was a contrast in my mind with his cousin, who was 18 a few years ago, and I sent her the same check. And I had a thank you. And I have frequent Facebook conversations with her. And we exchange a lot of information. Saying thank you somehow builds the relationship between you. It's not just that you gave the gift, but it's appreciated and the relationship grows. The thank you not only completes the gift giving, it develops the relationship. And that's why saying thanks to God is important. It not only completes God's gift to us, it builds our relationship with God. It's an important part of our prayer, not just when we're praying in church, but when we're praying in our own. And I don't know if you've ever thought about the different parts of prayer, but I want to take you to a mnemonic that I was taught in my confirmation classes when I was about 11, probably too young an age to be confirmed, but my father was the rector and I got pushed into the class, as one does. But one of the things that stuck in my mind was he talked about acts of prayer. Acts, A-C-T-S. A for adoration, C for confession, T for thanksgiving, and S for supplication. I wish they could have chosen a better word because who uses supplication today? Unless you're a lawyer. Supplication is asking for something. You're the supplicant. You're asking for something. It's, God, I want you to heal my mother who is sick. It's that kind of prayer. Confession is obvious. We're saying sorry for what we've done wrong and asking forgiveness. But it sometimes seems to me that people muddle up adoration and thanksgiving. 
What's the difference between the two? Adoration is worshipping God and glorifying God for who he is. Nothing to do with giving thanks for what we've received. So we praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship you, etc., etc., from the Tedeum. We worship and adore your glorious name. We acknowledge you. We praise you. It's all about giving thanks to uh, It's all about worshiping, adoring God for who God is. And then giving thanks is more about specific things that we are wanting to say thank you for. And not just things, but actions. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for giving me health and a good life. Thank you for my family and my friends, for all my happy memories, for peace, for love, joy, etc. It's thanking God for something. So there's the difference between adoration and thanksgiving. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise, we said in the psalm. And it's a good theme to have as we give thanks today. And let me finish with a story. You're all familiar with the American tradition of Thanksgiving. On that Thursday in November, it's a public holiday and we give thanks and so on. You can talk about Turkey and pilgrims, especially if you come from New England. Um, but we know what Thanksgiving is. In Wales, where I come from, we don't have that. But we've developed a tradition of Thanksgiving for the harvest, normally around September and October. And most churches, especially in rural areas, will have a special day of Thanksgiving services. It's a bit of an ordeal if you're the preacher. You start off in the morning with a communion service. In the afternoon, you will have another service for people who can't get out at night. And if you've got a local school that will take part, all the school children come and it's a very big event. Then there'll be some kind of tea afterwards. And in the evening, you'll have even song with a guest preacher. Now, some years ago in a village called San San Pride in the West Wales coast, I was the guest preacher at this school service. And all the children of the school were taking part. Small village, so I think there were about 50 children in the school. They all sang songs and different things. And then one class had written their own prayers of thanksgiving. And they came up to the microphone one after the other, and they read their prayers. They were all a, a bit inane, to be honest, but um, they're kids, and they're learning about thank you. This one child came to the front, and he said, I thank you, God, for all your good gifts, for food to eat, and then a long string of things, for sausages, fish fingers, potatoes, chips, beans, peas, carrots, bread, jam, butter, and the cat. <laughs> and I thought, that stuck in my mind, and the cat. <laughs> He obviously didn't know about commas and punctuations. But giving thanks, I will give thanks to you with my whole heart. And the reason for my story, it doesn't have to be good, beautiful words out of the prayer book. What comes from the heart can be as meaningful, sometimes more meaningful to God than getting the words right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to have a congregation reacting when you preach, <laughs> instead of wondering what's going on in the other end of the screen. Let's stand and say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
Prayers of the people are form four found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, You're hear our prayer. prayer. God, the people of this land and of all the nations, in the ways of justice and peace, <clears throat> that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources <laughs> rightly in the service of others to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Bless all of whose lives are closely linked with ours, to grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who knows our every need, we pray for St. Bartholomew's, asking to be led by the Holy Spirit in all that we do in the search for the person you have chosen to be our new rector. May we have, ears to, may we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts open to receive your wisdom and guidance and replace any fears for the future of our church with the assurance that you will reveal your perfect plan. We make this and all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and against our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we are truly sorry, we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may write in your will, walk in your ways. Glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. So let us stand to exchange the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace, everyone. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I'm not. I was going to zoom in and pan around for people at home to see you all, but Rick has put the notice up. So let us, let us move on and we have our offertory here.
Fred, just a word about giving out communion. Um, on the screen, for those at home, the prayer of spiritual communion should come. And after inviting you to receive communion, I will come and stand about here. And you may like to come up in a single file. Each wafer is in a paper cup. If you put out your hand, I will just dip it into your hands and you can take it. That way no one has touched it, I believe, gloves and tweezers we use when they were put here. Uh, so if you come up one aisle and back down the other, then you shouldn't have to get too close to keep. And the number we are, I think that will just work your okay. um, If you missed it at the beginning, the offertory plate is there, and uh, you know what that's for. <laughs> So, let's begin the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of fire and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also 
that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. We break the spread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God, for us the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and all you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I can't tell you how good it is to see a congregation here today. And um, if you've got any suggestions as to how we might improve the way we're doing the service, because all of this hybrid stuff is new to all of us, I'd be very glad to hear them. So um, as you go out, that'll be one thing. Um, I have a list of notices that's sitting on my desk. I forgot to leave it out here, but never mind. Um, I think I can remember them all. Cam, you're going to say something about the vestry. Uh, yeah. So if do you want to come to the mic, then um, <laughs> and anyone at home can hear you too. Your vestry is very interested in hearing your opinions, your thoughts, your ideas. In that vein, we are um, printing the agenda as well as the minutes from our vestry meetings in our weekly bulletin. Please read them. Please feel free to contact any vestry member. We very much want to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. In next week's email, there'll be a date for our parish weekend at Schweinmont. It's in September. I think it's 24th to 26th, but without my notes in front of me, don't take that as gospel. Um, I'm planning to hold a meeting after one of our Sunday services in July, on July the 11th, for those people who will go to Shrinemont to talk a little bit about what we do. Um, anyone who's wondering about whether they would go or not is, of course, very welcome to join us as well. Um, so there's that notice. And then finally, three weeks today, the 27th of June, is the 40th anniversary of my ordination. And I had hoped, pre-COVID, that we could have celebrated that in special ways. And we're kind of compromising in that. I'd thought of an online celebration, and now I'm trying to readapt it. But I've invited an old friend of mine to preach that Sunday. She's going to preach via our screen and via the internet from London. Um, She's not a Christian minister, she's a rabbi with whom I've worked a great deal and whom I've known for what must be 46 years or so now. Um, rabbi Alexandra Wright, she's the senior rabbi at the Liberal Jewish Synagogue in St. John's Wood, London. She was one of the first women in the UK to be ordained a rabbi and she's the first to be the senior rabbi at a leading synagogue. So she's quite a, a trailblazer. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing her on that Sunday, but I would love to have the company of as many of you as can join me for that celebration. We're going to sing our final hymn, and then I'll do the dismissal from By the Door.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be God.